Good morning to you, Michael. Let, let's start by talking about the cap at Dublin Airport. 32 million is the current cap. We're talking about moving it to 40 million. Why is that important? Because we can't grow at Dublin Airport. Traffic already is at 32 million. Uh, and Dublin Airport is losing aircraft routes, traffic jobs to other European airports. In the last month, we've switched four aircraft away from Dublin to southern Italy. We would had planned to put those aircraft in Dublin, but we can't well, because there's no room for them because of this 15-year-old, entirely bogus and artificial planning restriction. OK, um, the minister would say that he can't, the Minister for Transport, Eamon Ryan, would say that he can't do much about it because it is a planning issue. Other ministers have said something similar. You don't accept that? I, I don't. He's the Minister for Transport. This is a national uh, infrastructure issue. You cannot have access on and off the island of Ireland delegated to a couple of county councillors in Fingal and a couple of, frankly, local loony objectors uh, making false claims about noise. Uh, it's the only gateway on and off the island of Ireland. It's where most visitors from Europe want to come to Dublin. Some may go down the country as well. But if we can't grow, you ask, wh well, why did we open a second runway last year, which takes capacity at the airport up to 60 million passengers? It reduces the noise impact of Dublin because it divides. The, the, you now have two flight paths instead of one. But why did we spend 300 million on that if we're not going to use it? I'm sure residents would say these are not false claims about noise. But they would, but they are false claims about noise. The noise footprint of Dublin Airport has reduced by about 50% in the last uh, 10 years. And now the noise, by having a second runway, you're dividing. There's now two fl flight paths. It reduces the amount of noise over places by St. Margaret's and others by 50%. So are you suggesting you can have more flights in and out of Dublin Airport but still reduce noise because of modern aircraft? Is, is, that, is that the, no, the I, supposition? I mean, I, 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 well, there's no doubt you can have the modern aircraft and they are reducing noise. If you go back 20 years when Aer were flying 747s and other noisy aircraft, noise has dramatically declined. The flight paths are designed in such a way that the aircraft are taking off higher. And so by the time they're over Ashbourne or Ballybottle, and we've done these independent tests, they're generating about 45 decibels of noise, which is about the same as an average conversation. Nobody's being kept awake at night. The noise stories are mythical and false. Uh, and, you know, if anybody wants to put it to the test, we're happy to put the noise monitoring uh, equipment into your child's bedroom in the middle of the night and we'll see that actually there is no noise issue whatsoever at these properties. What about the issue with emissions because obviously we need to reduce our emissions, our carbon footprint, all of that as a country by about 50% by 2030. Uh, aviation is an emitter uh, of carbon and uh, our Minister for Transport is a Green Minister. Uh, that's probably driving some of the reluctance maybe to increase the cap but what about that fact that if we're going to drive down emissions aviation needs to also step up to the plate? Well, I think in aviation is. In Ryanair, we're investing about $20 billion in new aircraft now that carry 20% more passengers, but reduce uh, CO2 emissions by 20% and noise by a further 50%. I mean, I think the bigger issue here is our economic objectives. We're sending 40 or 50 aircraft this year to countries all over Europe who don't seem to have an issue with the emissions. They want our growth, they want our growth in tourism, they want our newer aircraft. Yet in Ireland, we can't allocate any of this growth to Ireland because we have an artificial cap at Dublin Airport. It's not an emissions issue. It's a question of whether we have a green transport minister, we have a green tourism minister. Did we want to grow, which is their own policy? Or are they happy to preside over stagnation? So do you think that and emissions the is only a, a distraction. Our national aviation strategy, that that is is mainly words in that case, that we're not actually fulfilling that remit at all? Well, I mean, yes. Uh, you know, our national aviation strategy is clear. We want to improve connectivity, we want to lower airfares, and we want to increase the contribution of aviation to job creation and economic growth in Ireland. None of that has been delivered by Eamon Ryan over the last four years, when he is the transport minister. We now have, and we're the only capital city in Europe whose airport has a traffic cap. Even the Dutch, who tried to introduce a cap, traffic cap at Schiphol uh, two years ago, have had that cap, traffic cap thrown out by the Dutch courts. In Ireland, we are the, we are the laughing stock of European aviation. Airports all over Europe are laughing at Dublin Airport because we're now exporting our aircraft and our growth to other European countries because we have a green minister, transport minister, who simply won't do his job. That, that uh, cap at Schiphol... That was removed because of the freedom of movement, I suppose, ethos of Europe. Yep. Would Ryanair consider taking a case on that basis here? We're certainly looking at it. Uh, and we're looking, but the, the question is whether taking a case here would actually speed up the process or the lifting of this cap. The much quicker way of doing it would be to get a Minister of Transport to issue an order to Dublin Airport waiving the cap, or better still, move legislation, establishing that Dublin Airport is a national asset and that the traffic cap is abolished. 
Lots of politicians would disagree with what you have been saying about the cap, though, Michael. They're saying it's a planning issue. It can't be interfered with. It can. Dublin Airport is not a local planning issue or, a fin- or, or something that can be left to Fingal County Council or a couple of loony ob- local objectors. It is the national gateway on and off the island of Ireland. The government can pass legislation lifting this cap, and it needs to do that because our entire aviation policy uh, centres around growth in connectivity, in uh, access, and delivering new jobs in Ireland. And we can't do that while we have a cap at Dublin Airport or a cap that can't be lifted for four years if it's left to the planning authorities. Minister Eamon Ryan has said that he's willing to meet you to discuss this. Obviously, he would have a, a very green agenda around transport as transport minister. You've been calling him a dunce. You've been making what some people would see as personalised or inflammatory uh, comments about him. Is that not going to make that meeting more difficult, not, not easier? I don't think so. I mean, it's a simple meeting. You know, we have a plan here to grow traffic from 20 million to 30 million passengers over the next six years, seven years. If Minister Ryan wants to deliver his own national aviation policy, he needs a growth strategy. He clearly doesn't have one. We can give him one. So I look forward to meeting him. And uh, the first item on the agenda is when are you going to scrap the crap at Dublin Airport? We don't believe the nonsense he goes on about that he can't interfere in planning. He interferes on a weekly basis uh, with the current planning process for the Dublin Airport metro he's out there all the time telling us it's going to be delivered later on this year he's confident that's an interference in the planning process we the question we ask is why don't you interfere in the process that is now delaying the growth of irish aviation for at least the next three or four years would you call him a dunce to his face if he doesn't deliver any growth to this transport minister absolutely and what about the issue of emissions we've talked about noise but with regard to emissions if we raise the cap by 25 percent we're going to be raising emissions by something similar we're supposed to be cutting emissions by 50 percent by 2030 aviation people say it has to do its bit as well it's doing its bit aviation i mean it's important aviation accounts for about two percent of europe's co2 emissions and we're investing 20 billion to reduce the emissions we'll care the new aircraft carry 20 percent more passengers but reduce emissions by 20 percent so we're already investing heavily in new technology what I, amazes me about all this emissions stuff is no other country in Europe is worried about the emissions. We have 50 aircraft this year. They've all been won by air, every other country in Europe is getting these new aircraft. Dublin isn't. So every other country seems to want our business, our growth, the tourism and the jobs. They're willing to put up with the very small increase in emissions that are going to be, but Dublin, that, are, that, will, that, will, assault, that will entail, but Dublin is losing out on the growth. I don't know why that's emissions-led, or it's just because we have a, a Minister for Transport who's not very good at his job. Shipwall Airport did have a cap at one point. It was removed. Uh, a case was taken that said that that cap was contrary to the freedom of movement within Europe. Would Ryanair consider taking a case like that here in Dublin? Uh, we would, and we're looking at it at the moment. The problem is that the legal that it may take a couple of years for that legal case to uh, run its way through the Irish courts as well. What we need here is a ministerial or a government action to lift the cap at Dublin Airport. The Irish economy, Irish jobs and Irish tourism can't afford to have the main gateway here blocked or closed, which is the current reality. Okay. Earlier on this week, you warned holidaymakers here are going to face higher charges, higher fares going off on their summer holidays. Um, what can people expect to see in terms of if they were going to book a holiday this weekend to go off uh, over the, the summer months? What are we looking at by way of hikes? I think prices this weekend are reasonably are reasonably okay. I mean, we still have plenty of low fare availability through June, July and August. But if you leave it much later than the next couple of weeks, I think this summer people are going in Ireland, particularly passengers at Dublin Airport, are going to face airfares that are... 10, 20% higher. Dublin Airport is hiking charges by 45% over the next uh, three years and capacity is capped, there's no growth, but demand is getting stronger by the day. So if I was booking holidays this year, and I think my wife has already booked them, I would book them as quickly as possible because if you leave it at all, it's going to be much more expensive than it was last year. Any flash sales coming up? Uh, there's a flash sale today. Uh, we are now February the 29th, we have a million seats on sale, but for travel in April at 29.99. All right. Um, in brief, the Climate Commissioner for the EU has said aviation fuel should be taxed. It's a no-brainer. What do you say to that? I agree with him. But sadly, the only aviation fuel that's being taxed is the fuel being, uh, are being bought by low-fare airlines doing point-to-point services in Europe. The Dutch environmental, min- uh, environmental Commissioner has remarkably exempted long-haul flights to and from Europe from any environmental taxes, despite the fact that they account for 53% of Europe's aviation CO2 emissions. So more than 1% of the 2% is long-haul flights, and yet he's exempted them. 
and the other flights that are exempt are transfer flights. So if you're taking two flights to get to your destination in Europe instead of one, you have an exemption. It's part of the same lunacy of these environmental taxes. The only people who are paying environmental taxes on air travel in Europe are the poor people flying from peripheral countries like Ireland, Portugal and Greece on Ryanair, on flights operated by Ryanair and others doing point-to-point flights. It's unfair and we should extend these environmental taxes to long-haul and transfer flights. Michael, should Ryanair still be flying in and out of Israel? We should. I think it's vital uh, that we try to fly to all of these war zones. We uh, fly to Israel, we fly to Jordan. Uh, We also used to fly to Ukraine, but the skies are closed at the moment. We're flying to a number of Polish airports close to Ukraine, where we carry literally hundreds of thousands of 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 Ukrainian citizens visiting friends and family. I think it's vital we keep flying to uh, Jerusalem. We fly not just Israeli passengers, but lots of Palestinian passengers, uh, Palestinian citizens and also NGOs who are travelling up and down to Jerusalem. We need to keep low fare access in Jerusalem. Unfortunately, we can't at the moment because we're being forced to use the high-cost Terminal 3 because Ben-Gurion Airport have closed our low-cost Terminal 1. Um, But it is vital. If if or when there's going to be peace and reconciliation in the Middle East, and we hope that will be sooner rather than later, Ryanair will play its part by offering offering the lowest airfare access to and from Israel. On that basis, would Ryanair fly in and out of Russia? No. uh, Russia is not part of the European Open Skies Agreement, and we have no desire to fly to and from Russia. But we do want to return to flying in Ukraine. We've reached agreement with the Ukraine government that as soon as the skies reopen there, we will uh, reconnect Ukraine. We'll put 25 routes into Ukraine, Lviv, Kiev and Odessa airports within six weeks of the uh, the war finishing and the skies reopening. Um, Finnish Airlines recently said that they were going to weigh passengers. They said that they're doing it. You were joking about this yesterday at your press conference, but they said that they're doing it on health and safety reasons on the basis that people are getting heavier and we need to know what passengers weigh in case the load on airlines, uh, airplanes rather, is is greater than we thought. Is that a good idea in terms of health and safety? No, it has no impact on health and safety whatsoever. I suspect Finnair weighing passengers because they have so few passengers, uh, they probably need to spread them around the aircraft for la- weight and balance ma- reasons. In Ryanair, our flights are 94% full, and we know that in Ryanair all our passengers are slim and trim. They have to be to walk to the, the long walks to the gates at Dublin Airport and to carry the one or two carry-on bags that uh, they're permitted. Uh, so no, I mean, it has no impact on health and safety. I don't know what Finnair are up to, but I suspect it's just that they carry so few passengers, they don't know what to do with them, so they would just weigh, and ba- weigh them. So Ryan, are the fittest passengers out there, you would suspect? The fittest, uh, uh, the most, uh, the fittest, and also the passengers who are saving the most amount of money in their air travel. Very lastly, you, you ended the uh, press conference yesterday with a joke about, uh, is no one going to ask me about the referendums? How are you going to vote? haven't decided yet. Uh, I, I'm sure I'll be reading it over the weekend uh, and then my wife will tell me what way to vote, which is the way it usually works in my house. Michael O'Leary, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you, Kira, and keep up the good work. I love the show.